My name is Matt Cyrus, and our family's been farming here in Central Oregon since the 1880s. I'm a sixth generation Central Oregon farmer, and we've, our background is raising hay, and mint, cattle. Four years ago, we decided to expand our horizons and, and try industrial hemp. We've been raising it since 2016. And last year, we actually tried some of the uh, soil balance product and seemed to see a, a difference in the yields. And so this year, we went uh, all in and we used it in the app first application when we uh, did our transplanting. And three times since then, in fact, our, we've just applied our second application, third application, last application uh, uh, will be next week. And we certainly seem to see a, a difference in both yields and the oil production on the buds that we've been testing. It certainly seems to be a, a good product that we're seeing an increase in, in our yields in oil production. Four years ago, hemp was just barely legal in the, both the U.S. and in Oregon. And we looked at the economics of it and with our background in agriculture, uh, specifically in certified seed potatoes, um, we thought we'd give hemp a try. And it's, you know, it's certainly been an interesting crop with a large learning curve on how to raise it. But uh, we think we're getting that down. And we've learned a lot of things not to do in, in raising this crop. But, you know, primarily the nutritional aspects are what's so di much different than uh, some of the other crops we've raised. And, you know, that's where, where products and like the, the kind root system comes into play. Uh, we've used that extensively this year with the petiole sampling, you know, the, the, from soil testing at the beginning to uh, tissue culture or plant cultures and then petiole and leaf sampling. It gives us a, a weekly indicator of what the nutrition is doing at the plant level as opposed to just, you know, doing a soil test at the beginning of the season and then guessing the rest of the season. You know, it's similar to what we used to do, you know, 30 years ago when we were raising certified seed potatoes. We monitored the nutritional levels in the plant on a weekly basis. And, you know, so it's nothing new with what we're doing here, but I think it's new to this industry and the fact that the hemp is so new um, as a crop that we can raise that, you know, here it comes across as a, a new concept, but uh, we're certainly see the benefits and the values of regular regular uh, nutritional monitoring. We do test for cannabinoids and terpenes, but overall, um, I think a combination of both the product and the, the, the nutritional monitoring, uh, we're seeing an uptick in our numbers uh, on the, you know, the, the CBD levels and the terpene levels seem to be higher than what we had in the past years. The importance of terpenes, um, they, they affect the, the odor and the taste of an end product. Also, the, each individual terpene has a significant value in its own right. In fact, uh, if you strip off the terpenes off of the oil profile, the terpenes alone will add probably 25 to 50 percent value to the oil. So a terpene rich product uh, makes it worth a lot more both on the smokable market and uh, oils for, for extraction. We've, we've been using beneficial um, biology in our soils since the first year. Uh, we've tried uh, some of the different teas. Uh, this is the first product that we've, we've actually seemed to see a, a difference in yields from some of the other stuff that we've tried. We're going to continue using it and we see a, a benefit um, on the bottom line. We use soil balance to, uh, to put into the transplant mix. We didn't want to risk um, a test strip by doing any without it. So all of our field was, was transplanted with it. Uh, our recovery time on transplanting uh, seemed to be about a week faster this year than historically. Normally, um, you transplant the, the seedlings and it takes a couple weeks before they really start to grow. Uh, we were seeing growth within a week. The overall plant health of our crop this year is better than we've had the last three years. And I attribute it to, to probably a combination of both the, the product and the nutritional monitoring to where we can put on the fertilizers that are needed as needed. As far as an overall impact on the farm, 
you know, we, we try to be very careful with what we put on our soils, what we put on our plants. You know, we typically don't use pesticides. Uh, we try to, to try to have healthy soils as opposed to try to cure a problem. We try to build up a resistance instead. Um, overall, we've seen very little problems this year. We haven't seen any pesticides. We haven't, uh, you know, certainly weeds are always a, a constant problem, but you know, overall, I mean, we've had very good healthy plants. Uh, we haven't really seen too much problems or stress in them. The application of the product is actually real simple. It's, it's a water soluble, so it's been real easy, especially with our drip system. Just pour the product in, our, in the tote to flood, um, stir it with water and pump it out in, through the system. I haven't seen any, uh, any residue on the bottom of the tank, so it appears to be a very water soluble product. A small increase in the oil production makes a big difference in the overall bottom line of the crop. And so even though the product isn't inexpensive, we think it's well worth the money invested in it for the bottom line of the crop. And I certainly, with what I've seen this year, I've been impressed enough that uh, we're certainly going to continue to use it and would recommend others give it a try but the preliminary information looks like it's made a, a fairly significant difference in our overall numbers. At this point, it looks pretty optimistic.